mansion is bigger than I remember. It doesn't help that I can barely see where I'm walking. What if there's a bunch of dead bodies in here? I am not ready. Get out. Get out now. We're part of the Hello beautifuls, this is Aromi here and welcome back to Dark Nights. We're here trying to get a broom to clean the classroom. And here we are, I believe this is Roya? In the closet? Covered in blood? No idea why. Praying he didn't like... Vampire or someone? <laughs> oh, I didn't read that. I start my search by opening the large locker at the, at the back of the room. To my horror, there's a person inside of it. I step back and almost stumble over my own feet in shock. He seems as surprised as I am. If I remember correctly, he is Junoru's older brother. Um, what was his name again? Judging by his own uniform, he must be from the elite class. Do you normally hang out in here? Or in there? The man narrows his eyes and glares ferociously at me. Mind your own business. My eyes trail down to his shirt, which is stained crimson red. Is that blood? Yikes. He must be hurt pretty badly. The blonde grunts quietly as he closes his eyes. I quickly run to get a first aid kit. Okay, so he got hurt. Okay, he didn't vampire someone. Sorry. The man is still sitting inside the locker when I return. Didn't I tell you to mind your own business? Sorry, I, I don't do that. His voice sounds weak and his expression is serious. Ignoring his tough guy act, I kneel beside him. Let me clean this for you. I reach out to help him, but he slaps my hand away. Hey, whether you like it or not, it should be treated. This is nothing you need to be concerned about. Oh my god. That is bloody. He grabs his chest and coughs up blood. I cannot simply sit and watch with bandages in hand. I roughly brush his hand away and start unbuttoning his shirt. I didn't ask for this, sorry. Once his torso is revealed, my eyes widen. There's a deep gash in his abdomen and a slash across his stomach, both of which are bleeding profusely. It, what the hell happened? I help him return around and find another wound on his back. How in the world did you manage this? The man pushes me away and covers his wound with his bloodstained shirt. I stand up and tell him that I'm going to call an ambulance, but before I can get away, he grabs my wrist. No, keep this a secret from everyone. Despite his injury, his grip is strong. Not knowing what else to do, I agree to his request. After his grip loosens, I kneel down beside him again and open his shirt to look at the wound once more. At least let me help you. Fine, there's a bullet in my chest. Take it out for me. What? Oh, uh, I'm not sure I'm qualified to do that. It'll be pretty messy. Just do it. Doctors study the whole field of ballistic science to deal with this stuff. At the very best, I will leave a huge scar. Well, it is unlikely I can reach there myself. I believe in you. I dig around the first aid kit until I find something to remove the bullet. With Luckily, there's a pair of large tweezers at the bottom of the bag. Fastened a little more roughly than I tin, I pull the bullet out of the man's back. Now once does he make a sound. The wound is deeper than I expect. I'm surprised he can remain conscious after so much blood loss. Stabbed and shot. What kind of trouble did this guy get into? Ugh, thanks, I guess. The man smiles slightly while peering down at the bloody mess that is his abdomen. Although he says it is unnecessary, I pull out a few more bandages and bind his torso. Thankfully, the bleeding seems to slow down. I stay by his side until he mysteriously stabilizes in rec record time. We've met before, haven't we? You're Junoru's brother. I'm sorry, I forgot your name. I didn't, and surprisingly I didn't because I have a short-term memory. It's Roya. Hey. Oh, uh, not hey. <laughs> it's Roya. I've never seen you around school. Are you an elite student? Is that what it's called? I like it. It suits me well. Anyway, care to explain why you were chilling in the locker with these awful injur- Well, with those awful injuries? Curiosity killed the cat. There are things you're better off not knowing. Do you always sass at the people who help you out? I pal at Roya's attitude. This guy is such a pain that I want to punch him even when he's injured. Sorry, that was ungentlemanly of me. Thank you anyway, Miss Cutie Nurse. It's Michiko. Roya buttons up his shirt, seemingly satisfied. I still can't believe he can act so calm with a wound like that. Let's keep this incident our little secret, alright? Why? Okay, don't have, to, don't have to get on my face. Just do it, unless... Roya leans forward and lifts my chin with his hand, forcing me to look up at him. His mischievous eyes bore into me while he moves his face closer to mine. The heck is he trying to do? And reflex I push him back, but Roya practically topples over, grasping at his stomach. Ugh, right. Into my weak spot. I think I'm going to die. I'm sorry. Just kidding. You're too easy to tease. Roya stands up and fixes his, ja his jacket. 
His demeanor is completely different from earlier. These injuries are no big deal, you know? I was only pretending to be hurt to see how you'd react. Because my acting skills are better than I thought. That was just an act? Eh, this is nothing. It was fun messing around with you. What about the blood on your shirt? And the lac lacerations? Lacerations? What the hell is that? <laughs> Rara chuckles and pats my head. Not much expanse with wounds, huh? No need to worry. Well, see you around. You're just gonna walk around bloodied up? Okay, have fun, bye. What was with that guy? <laughs> There's no way he was actually faking it. I've seen people with paper cuts who couldn't keep it together. Well, I had to clean my hands before someone thinks I had a nosebleed or something. I pushed my thoughts to the back of my mind before relocating a broom and heading back to the classroom. Okay. I leave earlier than usual and decide to go visit the mansion. I've never actually been to the mansion during the day. I wonder if it will be less spooky than at night. Nah, still spooky. After a short while, I reach the mansion and check the garden for signs of Junoru. He isn't here. His classes might not have ended yet. I walk up to the front door and examine the chains. Oh, right, there's another entrance. I head to the backyard to search for the hidden doorway. After searching for a while, I give up. I don't remember where it is. Jeez, this is more difficult than I thought. I lean against the wall and let it aside. Then suddenly, the wall collapses. Oh, look, I can't be that heavy. Panicked, I peek at the rubble. If Drew finds out I've wrecked his home, he'll be still mad at me. But after a moment, I notice something. Wait a second, this isn't the passage, is it? I peer around to make sure I am alone. If Junoru is at home, I hope he won't mind getting a surprise visitor. The farther I walk into the passage, the darker it becomes. The mansion is bigger than I remember. It doesn't help that I can barely see where I'm walking. What if there's a bunch of dead bodies in here? I am not ready. Get out. Get out now. I slow down into using the wall as my guide. I eventually end up in a huge room. Oh, thank god. <sighs> my mind instantly thinks of the worst. The light of the setting sun shines through the windows and catches on even more antiques than I noticed the last time I was here. Wow, look at that. Some of these actually seem brand new. Junoru has no reason to be embarrassed about living here. Anyway, I don't think he's down here. Maybe I should check the next floor. I carefully head up the stairs. I wonder where his room is. I am so nosy, dude. The next room I enter is pitch black. I have to stumble around using the walls to guide myself. Is there a light switch somewhere? It is too dark. All of a sudden, my foot hits something and I trip. How true is that? I slowly get up and check the place where I tripped. There is a small wooden box. I pick it up and leave the room before taking a look at it. This box has such an interesting design. Excuse me. I freeze when I hear a familiar voice. When I turn around, I see Junoru approaching. Miss Michiko. Uh... <laughs> this does not look good. I cannot think of a proper reply. I do hope you realize I can see that you're hiding something behind your back. Junoru steps closer to me as I his gentle eyes fill with curiosity. S Sorry, is this yours? I tripped over it a moment ago and I was curious about why it was on the floor. So, I promised I didn't look inside. Roya. After I ha ha hand the box to Junoru, he walks into a room I have not yet checked and leaves it there. I should have come in here without your permission. I'm really sorry. I figured it would be here, but that was no excuse. Junoru pauses for a moment, keeping me in suspense. I saw that the wall was damaged on my way in. Did you have something to do with that, Miss Michiko? Listen here, bud. I just lay down and it collapsed on me. <laughs> my cheeks are scorching with shame. I look down to hide my face. No matter how long I wait, Junoru remains quiet. When I dare to look at him again, his flat expression finally falters to reveal mild amusement. Never mind the damage. I will have it fixed. I'm simply impressed you were able to find the passage on your own. Well, that is not to say you should not have waited for me instead. Junoru smiles softly at me. Anyway, would you like a cup of tea, Miss Michiko? Ch sure, thanks. Not a big fan of tea, but I'll take it anyway. The two of us head downstairs together. While I make myself comfortable, Junoru prepares the tea. I cannot help but feel a bit flustered. Even though I broke the secret passage and snuck in, he is still treating me like a guest. I don't deserve this. He's too nice to me. Honestly, he is. A few minutes later, he returns with a plate filled with cute teacups and desserts. Whoa, this is too much. Junoru can't... Can't? His head been used. I do not like it. That's not what I meant. I do like it. In that case, please help yourself. Thank you. Ugh, I don't know if I should be polite or give in to my appetite. My eyes wander to the desserts on the plate. They all look delicious. In the end, I cannot resist the urge to try them all. It would be impolite not to take anything after he prepared so much. General glances at me as I reach out for a piece of cake. Hmm, 
This is delicious. Are, aren't you going to eat too? Perhaps later. There are still plenty of desserts. So eat as many as you would like. Are you trying to fatten me up? By the way, what was so dire that you felt the need to break into my home? Did something happen? Uh, no, nothing like that. And again, I'm sorry about the wall. I swear I'll pay for the repairs somehow. Or repairs. Please, do not stress about it. A wall can easily be fixed. Oh, right. Do you? How do you normally enter? Is there another entrance? I use that secret passage all the time. If you normally use it, then why is it secret? It was supposed to be a secret for outsiders. I suppose it will need a new name now that I have showed it to you. Junoru takes two white teacups from the table and pours tea into them. The fragrance of lavender fills the room. After thanking him, I take a sip from my cup. Um, how's your brother doing? He's fine, although Junoru's expression changes with my question. He is always stubborn, careless, hasty, and carefree. I cannot stand his attitude. Because he is older than I, he thinks he can do things however he likes, and I would clean his messes. I'm not his servant. <laughs> Living with him could would cause anyone to go insane. I stare speechlessly as I listen to Junoru's frustrations. I have never seen this side of him before. He clearly is not fond of his brother, even though he talks a lot. Uh, talks about him a lot. I'm an only child, so I don't know what it's like to have siblings. As I reach out for another delicious piece of cake, General looks away, his thoughts suddenly elsewhere. What's on your mind? I wonder, Miss Michiko, if it came to it, would you ever sacrifice your own happiness for others? If making others happy will make me happy too, then sure. Suppose only you or they could be happy. Would it not be selfish to keep it for yourself? I don't think so. We live for ourselves. That should be enough, to, enough reason to make your own happiness your first priority. Besides, you can't make someone else happy if you're sad, right? What if someone was only living for the sake of being alive, unable to even enrich the, uh, the lives of those around them? What is the purpose of an existence that only brings disaster? What is with all this deep talk? Cause, are you okay? <laughs> are you talking about yourself? I can't understand why you would think of yourself that way. I have lost my reason to... Never mind. You have lost your reason to live? You can be honest with me. General lets out a deep sigh and takes a sip, of, sip from his teacup. Our brother has been acting in both of our best interests, although I have not stopped him. I disagree with his way of doing things. At first he said we did th these things to ensure our own happiness, but over time he has become delusional. He justifies everything by saying he does it for me. Have you told him how you feel? Yes, I simply do not want to make things more difficult for him. Still, he should consider how you feel too. Perhaps, he would be better off without me. I am only a burden to him. Will that really make you both happy though? Doubt shimmers in Junoru's eyes. It is too difficult to predict the outcome of something which has not happened. Regardless, he's my only family. I do not want him to get into trouble on my behalf. May I ask what he's been doing? That is not for me to say. You're the way don't give up on him yet. If he's doing whatever it is for your sake, then he obviously cares about you too. Thank you. Junoru half smiles and takes his last sip of tea. <laughs> last sip of his tea. I get the impression he has been bottling these feelings for a long time. We spend the rest of the afternoon bantering. When I first met Junoru, I thought he did not enjoy talking. I thought he did not enjoy talking. I'm glad ha to have gotten to know him better. We have so much fun that I lose track of time. Although I want to stay even longer, the sky is already getting dark. Well, did I leave before 9 o'clock? A few feet from my house, I take the keys out of my pocket. Before I can reach the door, however, I hear strange noises behind me. <laughs> Little girl, get away from me. I get these keys. I'm going to use them as a knife or something. I don't know. As I turn around, I notice a shadow encroaching upon me. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. No. Please go away. Although I am steps away from the front door, I do not have enough time to open it and get away. I have to shake off the shadow first. Yeah, we shouldn't leave this shadow to our house either way. Front. My heart pounds rapidly in my chest as I zigzag down the neighborhood. Somehow I end up at the park. My goodness, how many times have I been followed this month? The kid from school made sense, but now there's a random weirdos. Uh, there are random weirdos trailing me. I seriously need to be more careful. Wait, is this the same stalker who's been following me around for the past week? I try to catch a glimpse of my pursuer, but between the darkness and distance, I cannot see her face. In fact, based on her jerky movements, she seems more like a corpse than a living person. 
No. No, I'm not down for that. No, I keep... Mm -mm. I can't keep running forever. I have to do something, anything. Out of the corner of my eye, I notice a large tree branch. It seems to be a good weapon as any. Bro. <sighs> she, she breathing on me? Well, what do you want from me? Leave me alone already, you creep. Uh, are you the one behind those disappearances? Hungry. I... <laughs> Don't eat me! Hello? A pursuer swiftly moves in front of me, her mouth wide open. Whoa, 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 whoa. Are you... What are you? Whoa, are you a vampire or something? She's really trying to hurt me. I can't hold back. When she's closing up a tripper by kicking at her legs. She begins crawling toward me. Bro, <laughs> no. When I try to move away, my leg is grabbed. Rotten cold... Ew! <laughs> Rotten cold fingers dig into my skin as she leans forward to bite me. This bitch, hello? Panic jolts through me. I reflexively smack her head away with the tree branch. Even after blood begins oozing from her forehead, my stalker does not let go. Although I hit her again, she does not stop trying to bite me. Maybe these monsters are nocturnal. That's why they're only attacking at night. I hit her once more, and because, you know, daytime, you can't murder. Technically, you can murder someone in the daytime, but it's more obvious. I hit her once more, this time mustering as much strength as I can. She lets go of my leg and falls to the ground with a hollow plop. Can't try to catch my breath and look at the scene before me. My heart nearly jumps out of my chest when I see the blood staining the tree branch. Ugh, what have I done? What am I supposed to do now? <sighs> a voice similar to the one from earlier calls out from nearby. I can't stand around here any longer. I'm definitely not alone. I drop my makeshift weapon and make a run for it. <sighs> Jesus. So, we have some blood hungry human flesh eating monsters after us. It is nearly 10 p.m. when I reach my house. Why the hell am I out so late? I'm not even- I'm not very hungry after what just happened, but I quickly prepare a small meal to make sure I keep my strength up. Am I okay? Is my leg okay? The girl bit my leg, didn't she? Took a chunk out of it, or she just like, bit into it, and I just have like, fangs on my leg or something. But anyway, this is where we're gonna end today's episode, because I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. Probably gonna take a break from recording as well, because my throat was killing me. But anyway, like I said to you guys before, I'm going to play through all the other guys' route once I finish this route, because I don't know how long this route is. But now we know that there are people that are eating flesh, blood. They're hungry for blood, I guess, not the flesh. So I don't know. I don't know. But it's really creepy, and I'm out. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. Stay beautiful, and I'll see you guys in the next one. 혼자 주저앉아 생각에만 커져가